Hey guys, I'm back, and I brought the Mark 18 out today for a quick discussion video. Uh, this is uh, me talking about my Mark 18 and how I have it set up. This is not a review. Uh, there's plenty of other videos on YouTube that do a great job reviewing the Mark 18. Uh, Grand Thumb comes to mind specifically. He did a great job on that uh, Mark 18 video he put out. So go check that out if you're interested. But if you want to just uh, check out this setup, you're interested in those kinds of videos, stick around for the next few minutes. Uh, so my Mark 18 was a factory SBR that I purchased from a local FFL. Um, took about four months for me to get it back, and uh, which is great, it's pretty fast. And uh, as soon as I got it in, shot it a little bit, then started tinkering and changing a few things out. Uh, it's currently serving as my home defense rifle. So uh, I'll go ahead and unload it, show clear for you guys. I do keep a loaded mag of Spear Gold Dot 64 grain soft points, my favorite 223 defense ammo. Loaded in there, nothing in the chamber. So I'll start at the back, work my way forward. Back here I have the BCM Mod Zero stock, I believe they call it. BCM makes great stuff. I love their stock specifically uh, because a lot of their options out there you get uh, rattled with. Uh, Magpul and especially um, Millspec. Not all Magpul ones, but definitely Millspec stocks. You get a lot of rattle. And uh, BCM got rid of that almost entirely. It's a real sturdy uh, stock. Uh, I mean, it gives you everything else you want. Nice padding on the back, good cheek weld, uh, and, uh, you know, eliminates that rattle so I you know it's a favorite of mine it is a little stiff to adjust the length of pull right here but that's not a big deal at all really you have uh, QD points on the other side on either side of the stock and uh, yeah that's enough to say about that the buffer tube here inside that I have a Geisley super 42 wire braided spring I believe they call it and I haven't uh, I haven't really shot it enough to say whether or not it it changes the shooting experience that much from a regular buffer spring, uh, but uh, it, it's been reliable. I just need to get it out there and shoot it side by side with a standard buffer spring to see if I can really tell that difference. Uh, but until then, you know, I don't have anything bad to say about it. The uh, end plate right here has a QD point. I can't remember if I had to add that or not. I think I did. Um, but it's a simple addition to do, pretty cheap modification. And uh, sitting in that QD cup is a sling, Blue Force Gear Vickers sling. I love these Blue Force Gear slings uh, from Vickers. They are extremely comfortable, these padded ones, anyway. Uh, and uh, I run them on most of my rifles. I've taken them through different classes and uh, it sounds like an advertisement, but really it was just really, really comfortable to have them on for hours at a time. Um, so that's what I carry on there. Uh, the, the adjustment tab is a different color too, so that that's well, nice to be able to find that quickly and make your adjustments. Uh, moving forward, the uh, grip I have on here is a Magpul K2 grip. Uh, it's not the plus, so it's just polymer. There's, there's no rubber molding over this. I prefer it this way because uh, if I wanted the rubber molding, I can always go with a talon grip. They make uh, they make uh, options for your uh, AR pistol grip, or you want the granulated or the rubber. So uh, you know, I, I didn't feel the need to go ahead and have a totally rubberized grip. It gives me some options this way. Um, the safety is a Battle Arms Development Ambi safety. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they have different sizes when you, uh, when you look online or not, but uh, I'd, I'd call this a medium, if I had to say. For me, it doesn't really get, away, get in the way when I activate it on the other side. This, uh, this side of the safety doesn't really nudge my finger at all. It just kind of goes right underneath it. That's just me, so I, it doesn't, doesn't really bother me. I'd rather have the Ambi option. Not too concerned about it hitting my finger. And uh, it's a smooth safety, real positive. 
no, not sticky at all, so it's it's been good. Not much else to say about that. The trigger is a Geisley GS2. I guess you could call it the Geisley's budget model. It's comparable to the uh, SSA model uh, in that it's a two-stage trigger, and the weights are pretty similar. Uh, I think just the only difference between them is just some of the material that they use to put this one together. But it is a Geisley product, so you know you can count on it. And through the well over a thousand rounds I've put through this rifle, I haven't had a single hang-up, you know, trigger-related, and I don't expect to. Uh, so really, I won't be upgrading to an SSA or anything like that until that day, you know, comes and, you know, this breaks. So I don't really expect that to happen. Go ahead and show you the weight on it, or the how it looks anyway. I don't have a gauge with me, but uh, you get your first stage here. You can hit your wall. Nice, clean break. I'd say four-ish pounds. And then you reset. Real loud, feels great, and you're, you know you're there. I love Geisley triggers. Uh, the lower, only other thing that's different is on this side, I have a Geisley Maritime Bolt Catch. Basically, it just adds more texture to your bolt catch and gives you a little more surface area to activate it. I, uh, I've been meaning to try a Bad Lover, but I haven't uh, gotten a chance to do that just yet. I've always run the traditional style bolt catch and bolt release, so it uh, works for me. That's, that's how I'm going to run it for now. Everything else is stock, the takedown pins and the mag release button. I just haven't found anything in that area yet that uh, really blows my mind that I have to have. So if you know of something, go ahead and let me know in the comments because I'm always looking for new stuff to tinker with. Uh, we can move on to the upper now, I think. Uh, you've probably noticed it already, this salient bulk carrier group. I'm going to take this down so I can show you it. It's a pretty interesting piece of kit. What salient decided to do was make their gas key integrated to the bolt carrier. So on most of your bolt carrier groups, your uh, average bolt carrier groups, you have your gas key here. And then it comes back a little further here. It doesn't have this, this kind of slope. It comes out a little further, more like a rectangle. And uh, it's screwed into the bolt carrier. And then the screws are staked. And uh, when you have uh, some serious use, uh, maybe a lot of full auto fire, uh, you're just really beating up your bolt carrier group, uh, it's... It's been done before that the gas key has sheared off the bolt carrier. And I've never seen that happen, only in pictures on the internet. But it's a possibility and Salient decided that they would integrate their gas key so that that uh, is virtually eliminated. You know, it's, it's all one piece. You're not going to have to worry about your gas key shearing off, theoretically. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a nice feature. But my favorite feature about it is the coating this tin tin coating that they put on this that gives it the gold appearance uh it's uh it really adds a lot of lubricity on top of it making it just look cool it uh, makes it really really easy to clean kind of like a nickel boron or a black nitride you just take a paper towel after you've you know gotten this thing filthy wipe it once or twice and it looks almost brand new without any kind of cleaning solvent or anything it, it's just um, a real real breeze to clean we just made it really nice especially since i shoot it suppressed so much uh, but uh i apologize if you hear my dog barking he's uh in the mood today as he usually is i guess but anyhow the i love the salient bulk here group they're almost always sold out and uh they're uh they're a great piece of kit. While I have this open, I'll show you the charging handle. I have the AXTS charging handle, a real OG uh, charging handle, if you're familiar with it, because this is actually the same as a Radian charging handle. I can't remember how it went 
if Radian bought AXTS or if AXTS became Radian. Uh, you can do a Google search if you're that interested on that topic. But th this is the same charging handle. Radian makes them now. They brand them as their, uh, I think, Raptor charging handles. I have one in the other the rifle that I'm not going to go get right now. Uh, but it's essentially the exact same. Uh, ambidextrous and uh, a real smooth, uh, just awesome charging handle. Uh, this is the one with the gas ports here to direct gas away from you when you're shooting. Seems to work nicely. And uh, if you buy a Radiant charging handle today, I think it's essentially the same as this one. So it's the only reason I haven't changed it out. Go ahead and put that back. The dog is going in and out of the house and through his dog door, so he may start barking shortly. And I hope we don't hear that. All right, moving on. This dust cover here is Millspec. I don't have many Punisher logos on there because I honestly think that looks really lame. Sorry if you guys are into that, but that's just not for me. Uh, moving on, the next big change I made was to the handguard. Uh, Mark 18s, when they come from the factory, usually have that RIS-2 quad rail on there, quad Picatinny rail. And it's a really robust rail, uh, super iconic to the Mark 18, but damn, it weighs a lot. Uh, you know, you'd be surprised how much weight you save when you go to something like this m -lock rail. And this is a heavier option, but even so, it uh, as far as M-Lock rails, this Geisley uh, Mark 8 rail, it's a heavier option compared to some of your other M-Lock rails, like your BCMs, but still, you're getting weight savings, and it's noticeable when you change it out, trust me. Uh, so that's what I put on there. Uh, Geisley rails are robust, and uh, I didn't really want to sacrifice too much of that, uh, you know, durability, so I went Geisley, of course. Um, threw on some PCM uh, M-Lock rail covers to help with some heat shielding. And a Magpul, I believe, vertical grip. I don't use it so much as a vertical grip, just kind of as a hand stop when I'm C-clamping. Uh, kind of like that. So, works for that. Up at the front here, I have my Surefire Scout light mounted on a Kinetic Development Group quick detach mount. These mounts are awesome. I don't know if you've seen them. Uh, Kinetic Development Group makes really cool stuff. It makes attaching things to your M-Lock rails, uh, I mean, seamless. Pops on or off, super easy, just by pressing onto the sides. And then set it back down. I'm doing this on camera, so trust me, it's easier than this. I'm just kind of, hold on, set it down. Do this two-handed. Just press down. There we go. It's much simpler than I just made it look, but it just clicks right in place into whatever slot um, you desire. And it's it's not going anywhere. It's in there. So, uh, sure, Firelight has stuck on there, you know, through multiple classes. So I've got full confidence in this mount. Um, you know, it's a it's a great uh, great uh, attachment. Um, on the Surefire Scout light, I have this uh, activation switch, Surefire activation switch. It's a dual pad, the rubberized kind that sticks to the Picatinny. You have your momentary on and your constant on button. That, uh, that'll that pop off right here every once in a while, but uh, I, I don't use it that hard that it, I've had to run into that too often. The barrel itself is still factory Daniel Defense 10.3 inch barrel. I haven't shot it out yet, and I probably won't. I just don't uh, don't have the time or the money to, to to shoot it that often, unfortunately, because I like to shoot my other rifles too. So I gotta share the love, and there's just not enough money to go around, sadly, um, or time really. I, I'd love to go to the range every day, but I uh, don't have the time for that. The break on here is a Surefire War Comp, and uh, that's what this RC2 Surefire suppressor goes on. It's a great suppressor. 
I won't talk about it too much. There's other videos on it, but it's it's known to be one of the most rugged suppressors out there. You're never going to be quiet with a 5.56-223 rifle, but it definitely makes the shooting experience more pleasurable. I highly recommend uh, giving it a shot. You know, just suppressing any 5.56 just to uh, really have that experience. It's it's nice. It changes it up for sure. <clears throat> the sights I have are a rear Troy Industries folding iron sight and a Daniel Defense fixed front sight. The reason I did one fixed and the other folding is because I wanted to keep my optic uh, a little more unobstructed by iron sights. The front iron sight I can use as a point of reference if I'm kind of in a weird shooting position and I need help finding that red dot, just find the front iron sight and my red dot won't be far. And then I can obviously flip this up if I need to go full irons. So I think that's it guys. Nothing else really exciting to talk about on the rifle here. Everything else is stock if I haven't mentioned it. The, uh, oh, the optic itself is an MRO, if you didn't know. It's a red dot version, not the new green. And it's sitting on a Midwest Industries mount, quick release mount. Just push in here, flip the, uh, the lever over, optic comes off, and you can ad adjust the uh, tension that it sits on the rail with, uh, with a flathead screwdriver on this side. Now I think I'm done. So guys, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or recommendations for parts I might be able to try on this rifle, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I'm always interested to find new and interesting pieces of gear uh, to try it out. So let me know. Thanks for watching, guys, and stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.